you have 25 uh, minutes. I'm going to get off camera and mute and I'll let you talk to Colin. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Chandler. Oh, hey, Josh. Hi, nice to meet you. You too. So how are the interviews going today? Oh, fine. <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah. It's all fun. So this is <laughs> to promote the movie? I think so. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and you played <laughs> you you played music in it? I made this yeah, I, I wrote the score for it. Oh, cool. Have you done uh, other movie scores or Uh-huh. Very cool. And uh how did this one uh, differ than than previous jobs that you've done? Mm, you mean uh I don't well do you mean in the job part or the music part? <laughs> um, I don't know. What's the difference? Oh, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess there's two different types. You know, uh, I guess the music. Yeah, that's probably a more interesting answer. Although I, I, I don't know the music for this one. If if I was to put my finger on something in particular that was that that kind of set it apart from other things that I've done recently. And this one is much more rhythmic um, there. It, that's really the, the foundation for the whole of the character of this score is very uh, rhythmic and driving and quite um, kind of uh, bubbly. Well, that's kind of fun. Do you play like I, I don't know exactly how scoring works. Do you play all the instruments, or do you sort of write it and then? Um... I, I play the way that I write. I I I play everything, um, and so I played all the instruments myself here, except for the strings, the orchestral strings. I wrote, you know, I I played the parts in various ways. Some of them are played on on uh keyboard and piano and other ones are play are, are sung or played on other instruments and then and then replayed on strings and and then there's a little bit of percussion that i did not uh, do myself that uh that a, that a friend played as well cool so it's kind of a yeah collaborative kind of process do you uh how do you like that compared to i guess you play in a band as well or multiple bands no, so I um I'm primarily a, a solo artist. Okay, and I I have in the past uh, been a member of bands um, that are not mine, but um, it, it has been over a decade since uh, since I've done that, and I do have a group of my own uh, that I'm in uh, from time to time called XI, but that bit you know so um other than that no not at the moment okay so primarily uh like soloist mm -hmm. and is saxophone your main thing it is yeah so like that's interesting i don't know if i've seen i guess i'm trying to think of if i know any like soloist saxophonist like maybe kenny g or something is he would he be an example of somebody who you know people go to see him play sax or is yeah. sax more of a thing like is that something that people usually play like alone or is it sort of something that usually is just part of a band there i i would not although kenny g is a saxophonist when i when i say solo saxophone i i what i'm describing is yeah definitely uh, uh, is alone um uh, there are saxophone soloists and that's a different thing someone who maybe is a you know is is the feature in their own band, um, which is something that, which is what I would would call Kenny when he does what he does. Um, there are solo saxophonists through, throughout and, and saxophonists who have had, who certainly played more solo uh, oriented um, music, but um, but yeah, I suppose most people conventionally know the instrument for being a, a part of groups. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, and like you, you settled in Montreal. Is, do you find that to be like a, a good musical city, a good place to sort of do everything? Uh, much, uh, I don't, um, much of my, what I do musically is, 
in, in, in terms of my performance and my and and my studio efforts and 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 life is self-contained. I don't do a whole lot of playing in the scene. And so yes, Montreal is a great musical city. I don't do a whole lot of performance in, in that or existing kind of in that world in, in, in so much as uh, as people exist in a scene gigging. Uh, that's not really what I, I, I do there, but I do appreciate uh, living living there and have lived there for many years now. Um, for various reasons it's a it's a very great town yeah yeah very very creative I went to uh just for laughs there this summer and uh and there, yeah I've been to the jazz festival there you must you must show up for that occasionally I do uh, that's very cool do you find uh it's a little cold I think you used to live in San Francisco or I did live in San Francisco and one of the things that made me leave was the weather uh <laughs> You, you, you didn't like the weather in San Francisco? Oh, no, no, no. It's dreadful. Too, um, too warm and nice? Or what? I don't know. I've never been there. I don't know that I would really ever qualify. I mean, I was there for six years. I would not I would not um, describe San Francisco as being warm and nice. It's... Um, who Was it Hemingway who said that, that the coldest winter he ever um, lived was a summer in San Francisco? Um, oh. somebody said that um, but uh, it no 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 I mean I don't want to shit on San Francisco it um, I I for, for, for my part I really I grew up in Michigan I do enjoy the presence of real discernible uh, with punctuation of seasons things that you know that that kind of mark the passing of years and I found that my relationship to time was um uh it was not to my liking um it was affected in a way that i did not appreciate when i lived on the west coast there um because the punctuation of seasons certainly is not demarcated by anything terribly clear and really just kind of there there's a there's a slight shift um of from rainier to not so rainy um but um it was not the, the kind of thing that i think that i'm hardwired for so i moved back to the east coast and i enjoy it um yeah that's it i just looked it up it looks like it was mark twain that said that it was twain mark. okay um I, yeah that's interesting because i you know a lot of people say they they would miss the changing of the seasons or so uh, you know, if they moved to Florida, and I was always like, "Oh, come on, that's that's ridiculous." But I I can see how it's sort of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, let me let me try not having cold weather, but it's it's getting cold here in Ottawa right now, and it's like, eh. but it, in a way, it is nice, like because when you're young, your sort of life is demarcated by school. Okay, now it's the new school year, it's September, and then you can sort of go, okay, that was first year, the second year of university, like you sort of have these things, but then when you're working a job, it's just your grown-up life is all the time and if you don't have the weather to change it's just like yeah I guess it could just be this blur of you know years past and you're like oh yeah when when was that if you can't say it was summer or winter or anything not just time but also energy because there's something about not just yourself feeling that what happens from being in cold and dark for several months many months and then having those first days of of warmth and sunlight uh and be, being able to take to shed layers and to experience that not only for, for what, what that does for your internal um uh, experience but also being amongst people who are all currently feeling that it, it it's quite a um it's quite a an exciting communal moment it's almost it's almost got a, a kind of um a, like an old like a deeply uh almost um sacred um religious sort of well wellspring um sort of feeling to it the, these these moments that happen um around and through uh people and then manifest themselves in their behavior um, simultaneously. That uh, is really 
that demarcation is also, I think, quite integral to what it is that I'm trying, what, what, what I was trying to put my finger on back then, that there, there simply wasn't that when I was living out there. And there is that very much when I'm living. And it's not, so not to say that I don't get the same kind of, um, like I, I have, I have poor sort of seasonally affected um, reactions to long winter and always have growing up, but there's something about it that even with that being the case, I still enjoy it more for the extremes that it affords over the course of, uh, of years. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's definitely that, you know, once it starts you know, the, the first patio day or something, or once it goes above freezing, everybody in Ottawa is like, ah, we're all sitting outside. And it's like, yeah, this communal thing that like we're all coming out together and, and you all experience it together. Cause I, I keep looking for sort of, communal things like if you go to a conference a film festival oh we're all here together we're all experiencing the same but then it's over and we're back to just regular life and and so yeah i guess the weather can be something where everybody sort of bonds over it and and even in the winter we're all okay it's cold for everyone so we're all kind of bundling up and being cozy inside and we're talking about that and and yeah i guess if it's always kind of the same there's not that and and yeah you don't appreciate the spring you know you don't it's like this thing you're looking forward to and everything I don't know. How do you how do you get through the winter? Like now that it's getting dark and cold all the time, Montreal is especially cold and dark. Like, uh, do you go out to to coffee shops to work, or do you? Do you God, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not a I'm not a social um, space worker. I um, I know that people enjoy that. Uh, I know that people. I mean, some people enjoy going into a a crowded space to do what it is that they do i um i did, couldn't be the further from that i i am very solitary uh when it comes to spending most of my time um working uh, very you know specifically being the 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 main uh stay for that but um yeah i i i think winter I love to, in, in, in terms of socializing, I, I, in winter, I love being, I love cooking kind of massively and, and bringing people together in that, in that way. And, and the kinds of, the kinds of dishes and, and, and feasting and stuff that, that winter kind of, you know, affords for itself. You can do different things with winter cooking than you can with summer cooking. Uh, for sure, and so I like to I like to do that. And then you also you in in winter you have to be uh, very surgical about how it is you get you get exercise, how it is you get sunlight, how it you know just really interacting with. So I try my best to make sure that much of my time is is in nature and is getting as much you know. So maybe cross country skiing. Uh, getting out into it in that way uh, on a very regular basis is pretty key uh, for yeah. me as well. Yeah, I wanted to, I guess last winter I said, I'm not going to let winter win. And I first thing every morning I woke up, I just put on running tights and I just went for a jog in the freezing cold. Mm -hmm. And just to yeah. say, okay, I got some sunshine. I got some exercise. I felt what the weather was. And then I stopped. And then even this morning I thought, okay, I'm going to start again. Cause I had a big birthday a couple of days ago. And I just, I was like, nah, nah, it's a waste of time. So I didn't do it. And I haven't been outside yet. Um, but I think it did help. And I felt like, yeah, it was just, and yeah, but you have to make yourself do it. It's not like it's, you know, it's summer. I'll just throw a pair of shorts and walk outside. It's like, no, I got to bundle up. I got to plan this. Oh but, yeah. Uh, definitely. Definitely a good idea. Um, I've been, I've been uh, picking up my guitar again lately past week. Actually, I played a couple open mics, some old songs I wrote 30 years ago. Cause I, I, uh, nice. I was, I was volunteering at some like uh, Ottawa, blues fest and and i just seen people on stage playing music i realized oh my god there's nothing like that there's no other job where you can stand on stage and have people screaming for you or just like so emotionally moved um how, how do you find like performing on stage compared to scoring a video game or scoring a movie like this or whatever like do you, do you prefer to be on stage is it as amazing as i imagine um be performance and Recording are very different. Obviously, the mediums are completely different. The experience is very different. And in, in, in the so scoring something composition, it's a it's a 
kind of, it's a puzzling it's a it's a gradual unfolding there's there's there's, there's um there are there's it it's got its joys and they are built out over the long term you know as you as you un kind of like unlock um and uh, and um um and parse out all the all the the elements that are necessary to really make it it all come together um and 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 uh and be effective <clears throat> in terms of uh, performance it's for, for me it's a very physical um performance is a very physical very immediate um uh, endeavor it, it, it's it's i I for one don't I've never been someone who who has been attracted to the stage for the react uh, reaction or adulation of of a of an audience um and my my music is is the 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 essence of of it is such that it's very difficult to play. It's very physically demanding to play. And so my experience being on stage is, is um, it's potentially more, if I was to describe it to somebody who doesn't do it, um, yeah, maybe if they are somebody who, who runs marathons or who, who who's like done something you know very like kind of torturously extremely physical like like wrestling or, or i don't know something where they're um where all of their consciousness their mind is wrapped up entirely in the moment just and 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 that um and in that action that activity so that the kind of everything else the people in the room the the you know your 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 past and future and all of the different musings of this over wandering mind are all kind of shut down because it's the only thing that exists is the moment is the moment and the execution um that's what it's like for me so it's it's very um I, I feel like it's more akin to kind of like high intensity meditation um than <laughs> than uh than anything else and um so yeah yeah no it sounds interesting uh, yeah i was gonna say it's kind of like meditation like that they say you gotta focus the mind and, and just not worry about other things you're just in the moment um mm -hmm. yeah like i uh i've been watching like harry styles uh videos and stuff and i just like oh my god like it seems to me like the ultimate dream to be this guy on stage and people just screaming for you and and totally in love with you but I guess that's not every, I mean, even other musicians aren't necessarily Harry Styles, like it's sort of a a unique kind of thing. Um, are, are you married to a musician? No. No. Um, what was it saying? I thought I read something about Sarah. Like My ex is a musician. Oh, okay. Uh, what was it like to, <laughs> um, I guess, be, did you, you guys collaborated on music? We did. We played in a band together for several years, and then we did um, make a record together, a duo record, and, and performed that a bit. Oh, cool. Kind of like that. What was that movie where it's the guy that meets the girl on the street and they make music together? Um, Once. Yeah, yeah. Sounds very, very romantic. I've always imagined what would it be like to be with a woman that we both make music together and stuff, but is it as idyllic as I imagined? I guess not. <laughs> um yeah. i don't know um yeah. it's it's probably i mean none everything is much more than it looks like i don't know is that is that concise enough um every single thing that we as a as an outsider look at you know you see somebody else's life and and you see just a a dimension or two and there are far far more of them that you know layers in reality when it comes to that those that person or those people and their experience so um yeah. are there the element are there the the layers to it that are that are um that are hugely special um 
Yes. Are there other layers? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. That's what everybody tells me. Like every time I'm like, oh man, I wish I had a family like that. Or like, you know, looking at people on Instagram or Facebook and all my friends are like, no, you don't know what problems people have or people are only posting their highlights and going, look how happy we are on vacation or whatever. Like that's, you know, you got to remember that you can't compare yourself to other people and, and uh, you just got to enjoy what you're doing. I used to put ads in the paper looking for people to play music with. Like I only know a few chords on the guitar, but I was like, oh, you know, I want to play songs and did a few open mics with people. And, and now that I'm going to open mics again this week, I'm going to try to find people to play with again. Good luck. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just kind of fun. And then I'm, you know, I'm going to research, how do you get a song on Spotify? Like that kind of, actually, how do you get a song on Spotify? Do you have songs on Spotify? I do. And then uh, that's kind of fun. Can do you track your stats to see where people are listening or how many? I don't people... pay attention to any of that. No, no, that's interesting. You got your, you got your people to do that, I guess. Um, or it just sort I, of happens. Somebody, and you don't even, yeah. Somebody wants to do it there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't, uh, reading reviews reading um about metrics and uh stats and those things i th mm. i think is kind of it's the death of your actual music making so if you're if you end up at least for me it, if you read a good review the idea that that person like the things that they liked now become something that you think consciously and subconsciously, oh, I'll do that again because somebody will somebody like mm. that. Then your music becomes less genuine to your own intuitions. And if it, you read a bad review, um, that person is telling you what they didn't like. And so uh, similarly, you might end up taking something like that to heart and going, oh, I'm gonna avoid doing that in the future. And who ultimately, who the fuck are these people to tell you what it was that is and is not your story? Um, so yeah. I don't read any of this. No, um, that's good. That's I good. don't pay attention to any of it. So um, because, yeah, uh, ultimately, I want to be able to I, I want just for my my own storytelling to to play out in the way that I that I conceive of it and imagine of it. So that's amazing. Here, let me just grab my guitar quick and uh... they're telling me to wrap this up because you've got uh, more interviews coming. So I just want to yeah. sing. A... I'm going to improvise a two second song thanking you for the interview. Uh, All right. <laughs> thank you, Colin Stetson, for sharing your deep thoughts. I learned a lot, uh, and I uh, appreciate this interview we got. <laughs> that's, nice. That's that's uh, there you go. See, uh, you've inspired me to make music, and it's funny. I went viral with a, a TikTok video last week, just about me talking about a strawberry frappuccino. It just hit two million views today, and Ooh. somebody somebody commented because then I'm like, oh, I should do other food review videos. So I started doing those and somebody commented, are you really doing food review videos just because this one took off? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> exactly. Thanks. They see I've got Colin's approval. So there we go. Well, uh, thank you so much. And uh, I will. Uh, and maybe we can jam sometime. Maybe you can do some sax on my uh, my little love songs. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> OK, thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks, Josh. Bye.